What up players, Warbot's tail up in this mud. Today we're going to be painting up a dire wolf. Now one of the things you're going to notice as I show you my finished models is that all of these models are built differently. They all have different designs, none of them are the same. So some of them have details that you're not going to see on other dire wolf models. And that's totally okay because most of the techniques that I'm going to teach you in this video you can use across the board for all of your dire wolf models and I'll hopefully cover all of the different types of areas and surfaces <clears throat> what you're gonna do to make them all pop and come alive with how you paint them so one of the things you might notice is that I took a lot of care in the shading and the washing because that's what's gonna do a lot of your work for you and um, again, this is just my style of painting and my technique. If you have your own style or things that you want to add or take away, then you're more than welcome to. I do want to make a note that in this one guy, you might notice that his face is all jacked up. And that's because I couldn't find this matching side of his head. So I green stuffed him this half of his face and tried to make it like it got melted off and burnt off in a fireball spell which is why it's painted black he shouldn't really look like that so this is just like specific to my model um, that's another reason why I didn't do an unboxing for these guys because by the time I built them up or when I looked at the sprue you're supposed to get 10 I think in a box and I can't find my other sprue and um, this one had the, a few of the pieces missing like this guy's face so that's okay, that's okay little doggy. Um, you're fine now, I green stuffed you a face. So this is the guy that we're gonna use. I decided to use this one because it's got a very dynamic action pose. It's got most of the same details on it that make the other models really come alive. So, and just check something before we get going. Now that I'm looking at it, I have no idea what this thing is coming down off of his ear. I don't know if that's a bone or something, but we'll see how we paint that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a brush and we're going to paint our bone color. And our bone color, of course, as always, my favorite bone color and yours, it's Deneb Stone. So I'm taking my brush, I'm wetting it, and for this, you don't really have to be too careful where it goes. You want your bone color to cover all of the skin areas and all of the bone areas. And by skin areas, I mean um, flesh. So that's, that's really most of it. And if you want to get some down on when you're building these things, each of them comes with its own separate rib cage. So you're going to eventually need to figure out Uh, get your paint up in there in the rib cages, and we want to make sure that you're hitting these areas from all these angles. Otherwise, once you get to the washes, it'll be really obvious that you missed an area because it'll still be the color of the primer. No idea what that is. I wonder what that is. It's like a like a um like a screw or something. And you know what? If we're if I'm painting over, I'm trying to look for things that could be mistaken as bone, and trying to paint those. But oops. Way too much paint I just used, that's all right.
okay with the tail most of them all of them have like skin on their tail and bones or bones popping out the back so you want to make sure you get those from all the different angles after you've gotten most of your bone base color done what I do is I like to turn it to all different angles and make sure that I got all of the you know I got it from different viewpoints you're really mainly concerned with how your model looks like from the top down since that's how your opponent's going to be looking at your models right something like that so bird's eye view so you don't have to worry too much about flipping it underneath uh, flipping it upside down and around but I like to do that just just in case just for myself all right while this thing is drying we can actually get started into our next step because by the time you finish um, the Deneb stone color should be should be drying itself while it's finishing I'm going to get started on the next step which is the exposed bloody tissues so the color that I'm going to use appropriately enough is red gore my red gore. Red gore. Now the difference between red gore and scab red and dark flesh is that they're all different color tones but scab red because it's darker it, you're gonna end up with a darker finish and uh, it's gonna look more like a like it's scabbed over where red gore really looks like it's fresh um, but it doesn't look like as bright red as blood red. Blood red looks like the actual blood itself. Red gore can actually come off looking beautifully like like uh, tissues and tendons and exposed musculature. And it's, that is perfect for what we want. So you're actually just going to be looking for the things that look like flayed and exposed. bits so there's not much on this one which is surprising because in some of my other direwolf models that I painted there was a huge amount of these but you're really just going for the lined bits of gory stuff in the body and um, if you can't tell if you're not sure then my rule is if it looks like spaghetti then paint it red gore doesn't rhyme but that's what I always say that's what I've always said see by painting it onto the Deneb stone which is a very light color it comes off even more vibrant red than it would if I was to leave this part the color of the undercoat and just paint it straight onto the gray so you get a much brighter finish Oh, that's so gross. Get on to this side now. No idea what that is. What is this supposed to be? earthworm a giant maggot it looks like a screw it really looks like a screw oh I'm uploading this clip I'm waiting for it to upload I'm gonna take a look at the GW website maybe they've got a, a hint of what it's supposed to be hmm so you use your best judgment really and it's up to you to paint what you're going to paint red gore. If 
a piece looks like it's supposed to be what, what that is or if it's really supposed to be something else. Who knows? And who's gonna tell you you're wrong? Not me. I stand by your side, man. I say, you know what? This guy painted that red gore and I stand by his decision. This painter's gotta stick together. Can I borrow five bucks? All right, last thing looks like this bit of, this bit of meaty red awesomeness right here in the ribs and then we can get started on the next step. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the hair. So I'm going for Adeptus Battle Gray. I've seen different shades of the hair color in the new army book, but I've decided I'm gonna go with this darker, more traditional one. And so what you wanna do is you just wanna get some Adeptus Battle Gray on your brush, add a little bit of water when you load it up, and then go right in. Good thing about it, if you prime with gray like I do, then you're right at around the same color tone of the hair. So it's not that big a deal if you mess up. You can cover any mistakes of the den of stone you might have made, because the den of stone will show up really obviously against the gray. You also notice that on the hind legs for some of these, they've got like random pieces of fur. It's really fur, we're painting that hair that you're gonna need to get in there and paint and turn at different angles to be able to see. Eh, weird. If you don't have Adeptus Battle Gray, P3 comes out with another great substitute called Iron Hall Gray. I've noticed that it has a thinner consistency to it than Adeptus Battle Gray though, so the coverage isn't that good, or isn't as... Ah, maybe it's a spinal column. The coverage isn't as good in my opinion, but it's still a, it's an option if you want a thinner paint then it already comes a lot thinner. Yeah, you know what, that's what it is. And I'll, I'll use some right now. If you don't shake it up, then all the pigment will go to the bottom and all the thin down medium comes to the top. So you really wanna give your iron hull gray a shake. <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm mixing two different kinds of paints. brave new world of painting. I've never mixed P3 paint on the same brush as a GW paint before. The good thing about it though is that you don't really have to thin it down since it's already a lot more thinned down. The bad thing about it is that you're going to need better brush control to get it to go where you want to go. 
So I've been watching a Young Frankenstein with Gene Wilder for all of you film impresarios out there. What a great movie. I wish Gene Wilder did more movies. He's amazing. Anyways, what was I talking about? Young Frankenstein, why? Oh, because I bought a new box of the Crypt Horrors. I, I didn't, I wasn't watching it because I bought a new box of Crypt Horrors, but um, I was like, oh, Crypt Horrors are pretty much like lumbering, hulking, giant Frankenstein's monsters. I have no idea what the fluff says they are, but in my mind, that's kind of how they they come off big hulking beasts stitched together that could not even be their fluff I don't even know but I think they need man I wish vampire counts would have more in their list that alludes to those old awesome gothic movies like a I don't know, like a Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing, or a Frankenstein's monster, or werewolves! Werewolves that look like werewolves. Not like teddy bears or puppies. I hate Twilight. Ah! I'm glad they didn't make like a foppish moody goth vampire nothing against any of you out there who like that sort of thing but if they had done that just to cater to the twilight crowds it would have been pretty depressing okay a lot of these models have bones intertwined in their fur for what i suppose or conjecture is like absolutely no good reason there's no reason why you should have the jawbone of an orc stuck in your fur doesn't make any sense like this bone sticking out your fur why why they're not like sharp edged bones either they're like Flipping leg bones connected to the hip bones doesn't make any sense to me. <sighs> so, after I finish this, I'm gonna get started on poor Lewis. He's been so patient, waiting for me to paint up his new pimp ride haven't gotten around to it yet. Sorry, Lewis. Well, that's okay, war boss. But you know I can't pick up chicks in this unpainted piece of junk. Lewis is all about the ladies. You're doing right, I am. Right under this guy's jawbone, he's got more fur. He's growing a little goatee. There. That is just about done with that. Also, in the gray, you're going to be painting the claws of each foot. I also missed some fur here on the back side. I'm gonna paint that now. And by the claws, I mean just the tips to the first joint. Why am I doing this? Because our model right now has only gray 
on the fur and on the hair, which happens mainly on the upper areas of the model. Like at the head or by the tail or on the back legs. By painting in the talons, I am essentially balancing the colors doing it a little bit more order ah. Ooh, that was a mess okay last thing we're gonna do before the fun washes happen is we're going to paint, if you have any wood models, or wood on your model, wood areas, such as, for example, this stake sticking out the back of this guy's neck, then now is the time you want to paint it. And you also want to paint any strips of cloth that are binding, binding the monster, the monster's limbs together. For these, I'm going to use Calp and Brown. So look on the four limbs of your, your dire wolves. You might not have noticed it, but some of them, this one for example, has strips of cloth holding the flesh to the bone. So we're painting it in Calp and Brown. We're also painting Calton Brown onto this wooden stake on the back, the back of his neck. I think two, no, three, it looks like three of these wolf heads come with this feature. I'll call it feature. Done. All right, everybody, now we're gonna get on to the most awesome part of any painting nowadays, which is the washes. So I've got four washes lined up. Let's take a look at them. Leviathan Purple. Bada Black. Ogren Flesh Wash. And Baal Red. So we're gonna go in order of things that are gonna dry the quickest or, or uh, take the most time to dry to you know successive highlighting uh, successive applications of shades is the words I'm looking for which means that we're gonna start with the red because in between the reds and the final spot or step is gonna be a lot of other steps so it's gonna give our all red time to time to dry so of course we're painting in these fleshy Played bits. Red gore with ball red to wash is so awesome. I also found a little bit of some right there in the skull. Trying to be really aware of the camera. The more and more videos I film. I'm really upset when <laughs> when I see that I'm painting a model and all of a sudden the, the model goes like out here and you only see one part that it's not even being painted. So I'm trying to get better folks, I'm trying. somebody would operate the camera correctly. Are you talking about me, monster? Yes, Igor. <sighs> All right, next we're going to paint. Okay, Ogren Flesh is gonna be our next step. And I actually wanna start with this because 
I'm gonna be painting. I'm gonna be painting ogre flesh in the flaps of skin that you see around each foot. So if anything looks like flesh that hasn't rotted away yet, if it doesn't look like bone basically, then you're gonna paint it ogre and flesh by the feet. Why are we starting by the feet? Because if there is some bone by the feet, then we wanna identify it. Like here, his little ankle bone is popping out. So we're gonna leave that bone colored for the distinction, the separation between the color of the ogren flesh and the color of the uh, the bone of the foot and the gray claws. So why ogren flesh? Because these creatures are eventually going to be given a thick black wash which is going to tie things in even further and when that happens it's going to make it look like very much like cured leather rather than a healthy flesh wash for the skin. So if you see individual bones like this, then you just leave it that denim stone color. For now anyways. Okay. Now that that's done, we have a basis for the rest of our skin. So now what we're going to do is we're going to choose between Ogren Flesh and Leviathan Purple. Now what Leviathan Purple is going to do is it's going to give your skin tone a very bruised and... Um, just really disgusting look so you want to you want to not be overly ambitious with where you put it so you want to alternate where this skin color goes You want to make sure you look all the way around. <coughs> Twist it all over the place so that you get all angles of it. So see what I did here is <coughs> I painted purple here, which means that I'm only going to find one more small little spot just to leave the purple as a spot color and not as a very dominant color. On this side, I'm going to decide before I paint, where do I want my purple? And then paint accordingly. So I'm going to say I want it on this strip at the front. As well as... as well as... let's just do this one. Okay, so now we're gonna go back in with our ogren flesh. We're gonna finish up painting everything, all of the skin layers that have not been painted in Leviathan Purple. I'm not using my uh, cork ghetto turntable to paint. And that is because I want to see what the result looks like if I hold it by my hand. And it's not as much of a, hopefully it's not as much of a distraction. Oh, this looks so gross. Oh, 
think it looks beautiful, master. Thank you, Igor. So we're going to go away for a little while, let all this dry, because the last wash we're going to apply is our bad ab black, but we don't want it to ruin any of the wash we did here. So I am going to, oh, forgot the tail. I'm going to cut this video off right now, take a look at where your model should be, and I'm going to upload this video, part one of how to paint a dire wolf. And then when we come back, we're going to finish with the bad ab black wash the highlights, and the basing. See you in the next one.